Hey, it's John McBride, RMUS. I am here with... Pete Kelsey. Pete Kelsey. And what company are you with, Pete? <laughs> I'm with VCTO Labs, but more important to, for today is I am an Emerson Ambassador. An Emerson Ambassador. So I, I would basically call you a power user, if you will. You know, you, you are going to have some realistic experience here with this new Emerson hover map. Right. I mean, and that's what we're kind of highlighting today and talking about and giving us a little bit of scope of what you've done so far. What do you think of this, of this new, and it, and it is fairly new. I mean, you've had it for how long? 10 days. 10 days. And the <laughs> amount of data that you've captured so far has probably been absolutely amazing. So <laughs> yeah. Um, no kidding. This is for me, the most exciting piece of hardware I've encountered in 25 years mm. because of its ease of use, we'll talk about that, mm -hmm. and flexibility, meaning, so I've got the handle now, meaning mm -hmm. I can walk with it. Um, there's a vehicle mount, so we can mount it to a car, a mm. golf cart, a hoverboard, I mean, you name it. And where things really get interested is when, or interesting is when you hang it from a drone. Yeah. Um, the hover map, um, is best known at the moment for doing amazing things in GPS denied environments. So mm -hmm. mines, tunnels, places you would never fly any other kind of drone. And how it works is it actually navigates in real time based on the LIDAR mm -hmm. that the SLAM unit is generating. It's, yeah. It's mind boggling. So, so you know, just, Understanding a bit of this LiDAR, and you know, we know we have a lot of LiDAR systems that actually can be put on UAS. There, there's a ton of them out yep. there. We can name a handful of them plus a number of UAS that carry them. But none of them actually communicate real time with the drone to actively, like you said, put it in these GPS denied spaces and then moving forward actually navigating, using it for obstacle avoidance and, and it's, it is amazing. And collecting data at the same time, right? building a map right. right now. And the UI, when you're actually flying, couldn't be easier. I mean, it's green or red. Mm -hmm. So if you get too close to something, it's gonna warn you mm -hmm. in any, you know, in X, Y, or Z. So it's pretty much foolproof, um, but it, <laughs> it just gets better. Meaning uh, the software and the post-processing, mm -hmm. it couldn't be easier. It's like, drag your data set here, let go. <laughs> Push the button, right. out pops a beautiful- Start. Yeah. Bang, zoom. We've seen it, we've yeah. seen it. And, and, and I think that very first data capture even we had was a very simplified one of just, here you go, here generated, and we've got something to work with. Yeah. And now, uh, now you were talking about why why are we here in this in this particular space? Because we've done you you did review basically we've got GPS denial uh, areas. We definitely have caves. We have mines. We have these very tight knit spots. But yeah. we're here in this location because you want a bit more. Yeah. My my selfish interest is AEC or mm -hmm. Architecture Engineering Construction, where I've spent my entire career, mm. 25 years. Um, so the lights in my head went off. Well, okay, it works in GPS denied environments. It must be able to fly indoors mm -hmm. and not collide with anything. So that's why we're here. And you know, what, what, a, what a great space. What a fascinating facility to really put it through its paces. Mm -hmm. um, and it works. Yeah, so we already did one flight outside, yeah. you know, and captured a ton of data. We then did a, a flight inside here, but then we're gonna also add some more data in this whole thing. I mean, we, we got a lot of data to try and build an actual 3D scan, and we didn't make mention of it yet, but I noticed on the bottom of your unit, you have a yeah. GoPro mounted to this thing. So what is that thing gonna yeah. do? Again, it just keeps getting better. So um, can, the go can the hover map do color? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. through the interface with a GoPro Hero 8 and, black. And again, don't want to compare it to others, but I've seen others with lots of fixed cameras on the side of them. They're taking images as they're going, tons mm -hmm. of data, but you just said, we're doing a video. We're doing a video real time. The sensor's doing its thing. We take both of those, merge together, and you've got a colorized data set. Yes. Yeah. I don't think it can be any easier than yeah. that. Yeah, and 
And I, you know, I didn't either, mm -hmm. honestly. You know, I've been in engineering for a long, long time, uh, which is a pretty <laughs> specific, dare I say, anal endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the first, the first real like billable project I flew with this was just last week mm -hmm. in the Denver area, which they closed down an airport for us. It's the Colorado Air and Spaceport. And the first thing I did with this was the control tower, which happens to be the tallest control tower in the United States. Wow. And, you know, FAA guys all around, I'm shaking in my shoes, but it was flawless. It just, just the, it, I saw the data set. And the data. A absolutely gorgeous. Spectacular. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, I would honestly say as we keep moving forward, we keep a lot more data sets we're able to collect, give it these use, these special use cases in which, you know, you've already done a number of things, again, putting it in the mind, doing a couple of flights. I'm super excited to see what more we can actually do, what you can do with it. And I know Emerson is continually working on better software, better capability. We flew this with an M300, but they have that also solution as well, having an M300 and doing it 100% autonomous. Yes. And, and I wanted to clarify, with the autonomy, you don't need any light or anything because that laser is just seeing everything around it. No visible light. I mean, it can go into a dark, That's right. completely black tunnel and still make its way around That's in the right. mapping. Almo and almost that high, I mean, we're in like Star Trek stuff right now. <laughs> yes. it's, it literally is. Yeah. yeah. So um, another random thought, but for anybody watching this in the public sector, mm -hmm. This is an Australian company. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, unless the laws have changed, that makes it okay for- Great, great point. You, you know, because it, it. it is a big thing right now yeah. to have a lot of that. So yeah. an Australian engineering, Australian company, where we are flying them in where the data collection is actually being locally kept right here. It's not, it doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't right. go to the bird. It doesn't do any that. It, we're only using it for guidance. Yeah. And that's absolutely amazing. So. Uh, an, an amazing unit here, super, super fantastic to have you here and as well showing us a bit more of this unit and uh, we, you know, what, what do we have in the future? I think it's just not going to end. <laughs> we're, so. just, we're just going to keep getting creative with it. That's what I'm going to be doing. Absolutely. So. Well, thanks guys. And again, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. RMUS. <laughs> thanks.